Hey, my name is Kumari Siraj, and these are the fabulous Wackers from Los Angeles. Actually, from everywhere else, but we all live in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a little bit of Germany, some Japan, Hello. Hello. some India by way of LA, <laughs> a little Brazil, some Guam, and uh, Denmark. Ooh. All up, all up in the peace. And what made you guys come together? Um, whacking, really. We started off whacking. Junko and actually Yoda were two of the first in the group. Um, and everybody just liked whacking. We had a passion for it, to learn it, and to preserve it, and evolve it, and just live in it. It's a lot of fun. So we wanted to skip around together. <laughs> and when you say live it, can you define that a little bit more? Um, sure. Whacking is a lifestyle from the way that you dress to the way that you conduct yourself on the day. I don't know, you eat, sleep, and breathe fabulousness. <laughs> Even when you don't have makeup on for an interview. It's so <laughs> fabulous. Now, clearly you guys are all different ages. Now, does it vary like, by your age, like what you're really into, like the different music and the lifestyle, does it vary? I think in general, we're all hip hop kids, um, but definitely everybody's into different styles of music and different genres of music. Um, house, Disco, in classical Indian, samba, like I think, yeah, yeah I think we're people who like love music in life. I don't think even if we weren't dancers, I, I don't think we wouldn't love music, jazz, yeah. Okay, and if we can go down the line, starting off with you and your inspirations in dance. My inspirations in dance. Um, first of all, my name is Hymeria, and I definitely look at older, graceful women for my inspiration. Specifically, my grandmother, she's like my life inspiration. She's a very graceful, powerful woman. And when I think of how she conducts herself in life and how, how she did conduct herself in life and the strength that she had, I take that for my life and I take that into dance and I take that into um, whacking. And so I try to stay strong in my whacking. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Junko Sasaki. I got inspired by like Soul Train first, like back in the day, 80s, 1980s. So I was in Japan and then I saw the video on the TV show, the old one. And they inspired me a lot because that they have a so different culture from Japan. So I wanted to see, then I came here, and then I met Kumari or those kind of company of friends. So they inspired me and they taught me a lot, the culture-wise. Like, I got mostly like inspired by more culture, because the dancing is from the more history of, or culture, like more grounded. So it is about technique stuff, but like mostly I got, I got something loose from the more ground. So we appreciate, like, everybody. Yay. I'm Yoda. Um, <laughs> I'm Yoda. Um, my inspiration comes from music. I had a musical family growing up. Grew up with John Coltrane's family. My dad's a bass player, so uh, he had me listening to he loves world music, so a lot of world culture and a lot of different types of people inspire me, and it goes through dance. Um, so I grew up doing a classical Indian dance, and that has a lot of arms, a lot of lines, <laughs> a lot of um, rhythm involved. And so um, I was just practicing here, and Kamari saw me and said, you wanna learn walking? I was like, what's that? <laughs> I didn't know, but I fell in love with it because you, it's still strong and graceful at the same time. It's funky. You have to be involved with the music. And it's, it is a culture that you have to get into and understand. And I just love it. Yay! <laughs> is it me or her? Hello. My name is Kamari. And I have a mint in my mouth. <laughs> Being a little rebellious. Um, my, <laughs> my family is are my main inspiration uh, because of the different styles of music that I grew up with and also 
I'm very mixed and my family background, my cultural background is very mixed. So I have a lot of fun stuff to pull from and it's definitely inspired my choice of, of music and the variety of, and also the variety of friends that I keep in my life. But um, definitely my family and my upbringing has inspired my dancing from day one. Other things have come in as I've learned more about different cultures and hip hop culture and whacking culture and things like that, which is natural part of the journey and the education. But the foundation for me is my family. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Sandy Tilsey. <laughs> and what inspired me, I think it's my life. Then all of the dance exercise that I do, my <laughs> friends, everything I get inspired. And Wacken, the people that I look up, like the first day that I saw dancing, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to dance like him, was Tyrone Proctor <laughs> in Locker Room. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. <laughs> they are my teachers too. And then all the girls, each one of here, I, I've been learning, like the watching and at the rehearsals and in the day. So everything inspired me. Yay! Hi, what's up? I'm Joel. Um, as far as being inspiration, I'd say uh, <laughs> just my, my life, my family. Started off as a military kid, so I traveled around a lot. And by traveling all around the United States, I got into so many different styles of music, dance, culture stuff, and I wanted to paint because I always wanted to have uh, a feel wherever I go that I'm part of it. So I always wanted to, what do you call it, adapt. Um, so that was my first inspiration, trying to get the feel of where I wanted to be as a person and a dancer. When it comes to whacking, my inspiration is definitely Kawhi because he's the one who got me into, into the style. If he didn't, if he didn't like put it in, I don't know if I'd get doing it right. Uh, mm -hmm. Tyrone Proctor, of course, from the Hogs. I, I find inspiration in movement, pure movement. Like, not necessarily people being clean, but the passion behind it. When I see people actually going for something, it inspires me. Then from there, I want to like change it up and put it into, into what I can do. Um, yeah, every one of my crew has given me a different like feel. And being, being a male whacker, that I wanted to make it stronger and make it weak so that everybody doesn't have to think that they have to be like, elegant princess. Nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. There is work for everybody. Not for everybody. But some people need to be strong. And I noticed it in the dance when I was watching a lot of videos and I was stuck to myself. I don't want to be like every other male watcher. It didn't feel like to me. I didn't want to I didn't want to be their mold. So I wanted to figure out how to make myself like different. So I just got inspired by what they just did and put it to myself. So. Yeah. Well, very nice and special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. My name is Nelly. Whoa. And I can go out <laughs> with you now. Yay! Um, I grew up in Denmark, and I've been in America for like a year and a half, almost too soon. And then I grew up in the theater business because both of my parents were technicians, and so that's where I kind of ended up now as well. But as well as falling in love with hip-hop culture when I was about 11. I was dancing when I was younger, doing capoeira and flamenco and stuff, but I was always a little boy, and I couldn't handle the... Why am I doing this? I didn't get it. So um, I had needed to stumble around a little bit, and then I saw a video with Missy Elliott, "This Is for My People," and that energy was so hype. Uh, I just I was like, and <laughs> after that, I looked at my mom. I said, "Mom, give me ten years, and I want to be right there." Mm -hmm. And it's been nine now, and I'm in LA. So so far, so good. Um, and I'm just I'm really in love with um, with honest, pure movement. Just honest movement. me it's not always <laughs> that it's more like the when somebody is truly expressing something the impact that it has like it can be so powerful and what um the reason why i love whacking is well i i was always a little boy and the first whacker i ever met was kumari and um and she showed me a dignified way of being sexy mm -hmm. and being feminine and being a woman and i was young i was 15 or something and, and i met kumari and i was like oh i can so then everything was basically stripper dancing, but without a pole. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. I'm not always that down with that, especially not when I'm 15. So <laughs> <laughs> I found whacking, and I really loved it. And to this day, it is the strength um, I 
I, I have and I use and I enjoy as a woman to use, and it is fused with everything I do that is feminine because it's so strong and dignified. And I love it, it's beautiful. And so, mm, so when you make that your expression and you keep it honest, it's just beautiful. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, acting started in the 1970s in Los Angeles in the gay clubs. And um, it was a form of expression that they used to release themselves. In the 70s, uh, gay people were not, there was a difference between gay and straight. Everybody was separated. Everybody had homophobia, you know, hate crimes, things like that. So for a gay man to walk out in sequence and be flamboyantly fabulous, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, wasn't always okay outside of the club. So in the club, with this music, with this dance, with this freedom and this expression, they found themselves and they found each other and they found a community that um, was, it was fun, it was free. They could dress up in costume, they would have competitions. Um, there's a whole competition circuit in the 70s and that's how the dancers made their money for the most part. Um, because in the industry side of it, it was predominantly jazz dancers um, who were booking all the jobs. So um, after a while, uh, when a, a thing that killed whacking or made it go away for a little bit uh, was AIDS. Um, a lot of people passed away from <coughs> HIV and AIDS, and it's a big thing now for people to know their status and know where they're at and you know know who you're letting into your body. But um, when that started happening, a lot of the people who are around today, you know, they started losing their friends. So the discouragement in that made them, you know, start a new chapter of their life, which did not include whacking. Uh, the people who kept that going um, was like Shabadoo, Anna Sanchez. They took it to the straight people, and um, it it flourished. That actually brought it to hip hop culture uh, through the movie Breaking and things like that. Um, and, you know, it still kind of stayed a little underground for a while until Brian Greene brought it back in 2003, 2002, 2003 in New York. And then myself and a few others of that time were like, what's this? Let's figure it out. <laughs> um, there wasn't a lot of information out at that point, And the class at that time wasn't really foundation. It was a fantastic class, but it was a lot of uh, choreography. So to figure it out, we had to go to different clubs, and then um, Tyrone started coming around again, and Archie Burnett, and a lot of these old heads, and they started giving us younger ones more and more information, but still it's little pieces, and it's still, that people are still trying to figure it out. But as more of these older people come out and about, um, we learn more, and we understand. It's really just having an understanding of what their lifestyle was like in their 70s why the music influenced them the way they did. And once we understand that from their stories and them sharing their experiences, then we can understand the dance for ourselves. And also knowing that, you know, we come from different places and we can share our experience through the dance as well. So I feel like that's an evolution from it. And 10 years from now, there'll be our students sharing their experience and so on and so forth. So it's important to know where it comes from. And there's that's like a brief, brief history. There's so much more to it, and names, places, dates. But um, yeah, once people, like in any dance style, need to know the history, period, plain and simple. That's the only way it's going to survive. That's the only way it's going to flourish and keep going. But then once you know your history, it's really important to be evolutionary. It's really important to make your own place in it and have your own voice because dance is a voice. Dance is a voice of change and a vehicle for people to express anything from politics to sex to things that are going on at home. Like it's it's an avenue of expression. So yeah. And the final question now collectively what do you guys think of the social justice going forward? Uh, we're battling everybody in sight, son. <laughs> 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 yeah, sight. 
No, it's uh, our group is our group is uh, 15 members deep, and it's difficult because we're all working dancers, so it's hard for us to get together. But um, we've been, I don't know, what? Everyone teaches. Yeah, and teaching. Mm -hmm. Keeping busy, dancing. And sharing what we, what we know. Doing workshops, battling, doing shows. Organizing. Organizing, mm -hmm. opening our mouths. And, <laughs> and just getting down wherever we are. <laughs> and yeah. and spread showing out. what we do <laughs> being ourselves and mm -hmm. showing other people mm -hmm. that you can whack. Yeah. Too, like right. They're like, oh my god, what is that? Mm -hmm. Like, how many times have you not had somebody come up to us and be like, oh, mm -hmm. I, I like that. That's dope. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. We were like, whack. And they're like, oh, cool. And then that's another person that yeah, you know about it. Starts. Yeah, it's It's really cool because, um, for the most part, when we do stuff, people are like, what is that? Mm -hmm. The Whackers have always been a wild card, always. People are like, what is going on? And it's open doors for us because people didn't know what they mm -hmm. could call it. Like, we've danced or performed for Madonna in London, um, Tony Braxton's Make My Heart video, Estelle's Freak video, um, Carmeet Bashar from the Pussycat Dolls. Uh, who else? I don't know. Joey Watt. Jody Watley, mm -hmm. like it's it's been cool our opportunities that we've gotten as a group just by flinging our arms around <laughs> and <laughs> being fabulous. Um, but it, it's it's really awesome to share that as a group mm -hmm. with our friends. So the platform hip hop international, how do you make that transition? Um, hip hop international has a lot of whacking in it now. Mm -hmm. Um, in part from me teaching a whacking workshop there and I would dare say now request crew from what they've done in years past. Um, and whacking international, is, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 that's later. <laughs> that's, 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 nice though. that's my event. Um, whacking international. Whacking international. <laughs> Hip hop international <laughs> is, uh, is a good platform for for networking, for business, mm -hmm. for socializing, for meeting people from all over the world who share a passion in dance. And we just want to put our best foot forward and represent whacking to the fullest. Uh, whacking as it was and whacking as wherever we're taking it. And just shut it down, really. Shut it down. And leave people with their jaws on the floor and ready for more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 